Okay, it's 5.15. I'm going to call the meeting to order. First order of business is reorganization. Now that we are fully um, sworn in, appointed and sworn in. So a motion to retain the same board as last year. I'll second. Discussion? Yeah, they asked for other nominations. Other nominations? Um, I would like to nominate somebody. Okay. Um, I'm Alon Siegel as a chairperson. Okay. We have a second. I'll second. Okay. Discussion. We need a discussion or no? Yeah. Okay. We don't have to have a discussion, no. Um I'm um just wondering um with the concern about this is no disrespect to Alana about the number of meetings that have been missed over the past several months. Um, and I think our present chair has done a great job in keeping us focused and getting things done. So um, uh, I, I certainly am going to support um, or Karen's nomination for uh, to continue as our care person. Any other comments? Um, I, I would kind of come in. Well, that would fall under the category of any other comments. Absolutely. Um, I just, you know, it's, uh, I, I think that. Um, you know, we have we have a lot of new people moving to town. I meet them all the time. Um, up in the athletic center of the lake. Um, we have a lot of younger folks coming to uh, the town, you know, to ask us to do stuff in in, uh, in our parks. And um, I I think I think it would benefit um, a lot of people moving into town to see somebody who's you know in tune with that Alana is, uh, she's got a business that she's in touch with a lot of the, the, the young moms and young families in the area. And she's busy, without a doubt. You know, a lot of times I've heard people say, when you want somebody to do something, then, you know, go to the busy apartment. And, um, and I, I feel that you should give her a chance. I feel like we should give her a chance. It's it's there's nothing unhealthy about about changing changing the the leadership of a board every once in a while. It's it's I think it would be more reflective of, of what's happening in town. And I uh, and I I hope I hope you guys would all look at that as a positive thing. That this is not against anybody, or you know, I just think that it's uh, I I find it. Um, I don't think I hope you would look at that positively. May I speak? Please. So just so everyone understands, the role of a chair of any board is to run a meeting and to set the agenda. It's the board's responsibility to do everything else. So, Bill, I know you didn't mean it that way, but there's probably four of us here that are maybe over 60 and are new to town. And what you're saying is we should get off the board because it's not the role of the chair, it's the role of the board to set direction. The chair does set the tone of the of the conversation though. Mm -hmm. And 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 I think that uh, I think that, that is something that would benefit the board. And I am above 60 also, Steve. And you have a look at that. Well, I, <laughs> thank you. I wore a yellow shirt for you today. But, but um, I like it. But uh, but uh, I you look know, like a turkey. You look like an athlete. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, it's you know it's uh, you know I was I was the chairman of a board of a thirty five hundred member uh, organization with fifteen people on a board, and the guy who who I replaced, the first thing he said to me was, "You have to find the person that's going to replace you and replace them, get replaced within four years." And I think there is. I, I think there is something healthy about being on a board and changing the, the leadership. And if it doesn't work out, 
Karen, come, come back. And Karen, you are one of the most dedicated people in this town, serving this town in, uh, in so many different ways. This is not a reflection of, of your leadership or anything else. This is not calling into question any of that. But it's, I, I, just, I just think it would be a good idea for us. I didn't even think of this until I heard we were supposed to reorganize. And I thought about it. And um, I, I think that it would be to the benefit of everybody to try something new and different. Can I speak? Yes. Just so you know, Bill, I've been chair of the school committee since 1999, so obviously I don't agree with your, <laughs> with your take on this, because I, I, I would be hypocritical if I did. I knew you were going to say that. And, you know, and it, it's, it's I, I'm just talking from this board. No, I'm, you know. I appreciate it. Go ahead, Julie. Um, I feel the same way, Bill, that about you, Karen. I think you're an amazing chair. Uh, the only reason I'm seconding uh, this motion is because I am a strong believer in just turnover um, and that anyone who wants to serve on a board um, and wants to chair a board should have the opportunity to do so. It's like, for me, it's completely apolitical. Um, I just joined the tree committee and I'm, I, we kind of read, it, it's been like reimagined and I'm chair, but I'm I know that by next year, when we reorganize, I want somebody else in the circle to take over just so um, everyone has uh, the experience of it and also to bring in um, another perspective. And I imagine that we're just going to go keep going around. Um, that is the only reason I would second something like this. It absolutely is not the way, it's not a reflection of the way we all operate together because I think we're a pretty good group and I think we get a lot done. Um, the newest member, and um, I really love serving on here. And um, I just, I just think it's like a natural thing to do. And I should, I think that like town committees should be like super apolitical because we're all private, private residents, and we're just volunteers here. Um, so I, I feel like this should not really be like a power structure that is kind of like feels political. You know, there should just be somebody who's like organizing the meeting and. Um, and then kind of rotate so that like it just feels like we're dynamic and not to say that we're not, but um, it just makes everybody feel like, oh, this is kind of like a dynamic moving body. We're all like for each other, um, whether Lucree Davey or Terry or anybody else who would like want to put in a motion to be chair, I would definitely second it because I think that everyone who wants to serve should. Um, and that's just my my view on this. Like I have no... Uh, bad feelings about anything. I just I just like want town committees to be like um a very easy place to make a difference in the town. And not anyone have to feel like somebody's in, totally in charge or somebody's less than I just want everyone to have the chance that they want. And if Ilana wants to be a chair, I would I would say yes. I would say yes to anybody who, who would put up um with the interest. Anybody else? I just have, I have a question. Um, go ahead. The present structure is the chairman, and then there's a, a second or a, a vice chair. A vice yeah. Chair. yeah. So we, and that's Paul at this point, right? Correct. And and those are the only other uh, positions that we're, we're dealing with. So yeah, we don't have a treasurer because we don't need it, and we don't have a secretary because she's over there. Right. So I mean, one one thought would be that you could. One of them could be chair and one could be vice chair of the two interested parties. And we can work out who's, you know, I mean, you know, like rather than just be you and Paul this time, it could be you and, and Alana as uh, filling that position, those two positions. Does that make any sense? I'm, I'm, I'm going to say something, but I want everybody to feel like they have. A voice here. Yeah, no, I just see it, you know, because they're both they're both interested in doing the job. So, you know, there's some way that that you could both have it or or participate in the in the process. You know, and that would mean Paul's we we would 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 step have to step down or whatever. It, you know, I mean that's just a suggestion. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. 
Well, once again, you know, being chair, and I've been chair of this board before, being chair of this board is an active role. And, and without casting, and I'm trying to be difficult not to, to sound like it is, but I don't know how we can have a chair of a board who has been missing from innumerable numbers of meetings, including the last one that we had. And, and it's, it's not something I think he could do remotely, no disrespect again, but I think we need an active person. Uh, it's, it's certainly um, um, a time consuming uh, position at time. Uh, and, and all the things that go on, you know, between meetings and have to be taken care of. So I, I, once again, I, I don't think uh, that we need to get too deeply into this, but I certainly respect Alana if she's interested in this, but I am definitely uh, in favor of continuing with the chairmanship that we've had for the past several years. Anybody else want to talk? Oh, I was coming. Go ahead. Uh, Paul, uh, I really appreciate what you were saying, and I think you're absolutely right that the chairmanship uh, requires participation and presence. Um, and uh, it is true that it has been quite um, a difficult thing to um, make it to all of the board meetings and you're right to be concerned about it. So I think we should um, allow me to just put that out there as absolutely um, um, an essential piece of this puzzle. But what I what I am what I'm here to sort of say and stand by in this moment is that in in offering to take the chair position, I would like to learn with, with Karen, from Karen, if she's willing, about what it requires to run uh, a committee like this, to learn the ropes of what it, what it is like to take leadership in this kind of way for this town. It's very, very important to me. And I, I hope that you have felt that when I am present, that I participate and have something to offer. Um, and, and I think in this moment, the opportunity is to step in and to do more uh, if the committee would like. And I'm saying that I am willing and interested in participating in a bigger way. And uh, that will require me to make sure that I am in attendance at the meetings and to make sure that as many of the rest of the of the board can be in attendance at the meetings and participating in a in a bigger way, hopefully, um, because I would like to feel like this board is full of leaders, you know, full of people taking a, um, an active role in um, the the towns, parks, recreation, and you know, participation and life. Um, that's that's why I'm here. That's what I'm interested in. Um, and so I think your concern is very, very appropriate. But I'm also saying that I am interested in making that kind of commitment. I think what Julie was saying about a rotating leadership. I mean, what what would the harm be of trying a different leadership for a year? And then reassessing. I believe that that's the the guidelines for the the committee is for it to be an ongoing conversation where leadership is reassessed, and that there is some value in in having more people on the board who understand all of the intricate ins and outs of everything that's going on. Um, and I'm not sure how to make that happen other than having having a more diverse leadership. Anybody else? Yes, Mr. Aberdeen. Or that I have the public speaking time. No, I. Oh. Um, I guess I just want to share one thing. Um, I've only been here less than a year still. Um, um, and, you know, I think we all see Karen here at the meeting. Um, 
I have the pleasure of being here quite a bit. Um, you know, and so I hope all of you know, um, and maybe you don't know to the extent, but she does a ton behind the scenes with me. Um, you know, and this is just so everyone knows what's involved. To because well, I think we've got a lot done in about a year or so since I've been here. You know, we have a to-do list we work off of. We just, you know, Karen, you know, we meet every week. Um, I hear from her three or four times a week when there's issues that the board members pass on to her. Um, but the uh, schedule, the, the 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 mixed field, mixed use field schedule. Um, Karen was intimately involved with keeping those things running with Karen. So it's just not um, whoever leaves. I mean, unless you're going to divvy up the task, it's just not. That stuff just doesn't get done. You know, it's not me doing it or Carol doing it. There's someone that's beside us, you know, helping us with the direction. Or as issues come up at the park site and all care um, and all, a lot of times it's a, hey, look at guys, what do you want to do with this as a chair of culture? And we'll decide to take it to the meeting or it's not an issue, don't worry about it. So I just want to make the point that there's a lot we've done and there's a lot in the works. Um, you know, recently we split off. Do we in grocery park, which I think was great. You know, we kind of took that out, put that on a couple of other people's shoulders. We could do that with different members of the group. even more. Um, but I guess I just wanted to make everybody aware of that it's more than just the one hour, two hours we spent here as a chair. Maybe that's not the role of the chair, but she does, you know, it, it does get a lot of motivation and things going. So, Debbie? Um, I just, I think you do a great job doing the running the meetings. And I know you do a lot of work behind the scenes, um, but I, I know Alana as well. And I know that just in her business life and other parts of her life, she gets things done. And I just, I think if she wants the opportunity, we should give her the opportunity to show us, you know, if she can, you know, rise to the challenge and um, do all the things that, um, this committee needs from over there. Anybody else? Um, I find it very difficult after looking over 2023 and 2022 that there has been less than 50% attendance by Alana at board meetings. For whatever reason, she has kids, she has a business, that's fine. I would more then welcome her saying, God, I'd love to help with this project. I'd love to do that. I basically did that with you, Tom, and you, Bill, down there at, at, at Olympian Meadows, because you kept saying to me last year, you got to let us help you out. You got to let us help you out. We're going to help you out. So that's what I did. I gave you the ball, and you guys ran with it. And then you, you guys spoke up and said, okay, we want to get this grove and do it. And what did I do? I said, great, go for it. I have not heard from her to do anything. So my point is, is if you want to be a leader, you need to know how things operate. And if you're not here, you really don't know how it operates. So the way to get ready for that is to start to work in the process before you run the whole show. I just don't think it's prudent especially with all the stuff that we've got going on. And I think that um, I don't fault her for running a business or having kids or whatever, but I do have a difficulty in accepting the fact that, I mean, even tonight's the night she wants to be in, but she's not here. And stuff, you have to be here to figure out what's going on and meeting with Joe and phone calls and all the other stuff. I mean. I can tell you about East Rock and Chief Walsh and all that. I can talk to you about Lake Mansfield Alliance and the new benches going in and how we do all that. That was all going to be caught up, but uh, that that's the way I feel about it. And this is this the commission gets to make their own decisions. That's this is America. So you can do whatever you feel you want to do. But I have a difficult time accepting the fact that that would be just change because it's a we should change. If you want to do and be a leader, then learn how to be a leader. I don't want you to have on-the-job training 
when you're in charge and then to depend on me to help you out when you want to be, learn how to be and then be. Any other comments? Uh, I, I, this, this turns into a little bit of a personality thing, and I, I don't think that, you know, yes, Alana, Alana has not been here for, for a few meetings. All of us have been absent from meetings at times. My, my impression is Alana is a responsible businesswoman. She's a responsible parent, right. and, and she is stepping up and saying, I want to be a responsible leader. She is in leadership roles in a variety of different places. And I don't think there's anything wrong with, with us trusting her saying she wants to do this and all of us saying, hey, we're going to get out. Yeah, we're going to give it a shot. And then in a year, we'll make an assessment and we can all say it did work, it did not work. We can be honest with each other and talk about it. But I don't think that I don't think the town parks are gonna are gonna suffer for Alana's leadership role in this. I don't, I don't think the town parks are going to suffer at all or any of the projects that we got going on with them. May I ask a question? Sure. Uh, Steve, um, a few minutes ago, you you stated that um, that the chair's job was to set the agenda and to run the meetings. Correct. And is that is that? I didn't hear that's you. A, that's a major responsibility. Yes. So if they one, do anything else that's as a member of the committee, as the as the chair, she's going to take, or you're going to take, whoever gets in here is going to take the responsibilities, whatever we vote on, and make sure it happens. But it's not, but the, the two biggest responsibilities are setting the agenda and running the meeting. But it doesn't, it's not like written into the bylaws that the, the chair is responsible for meeting with Joe regularly, it's the responsibility of the committee to make sure that the committee is brought up to speed with all decisions that need to be made regarding parks and recreation. I would say this, Alana, that a good chair would do what Karen's doing, and I'm not saying this against you or poor Karen, because I've been chair long enough. If you don't do that, things are going to fall through. 12 meetings a year isn't enough, so uh, the I, things, have to, things have to move forward. I, I hear you. I absolutely understand that and hear so clearly and know about how much on the ground time Karen puts in. But my question is whether or not that is that it has to be that way, or if it is just that you're suggesting that that is that is what has worked best. That has that's, been... what a, that's how a successful board works, in my okay. estimation. But that's only my opinion. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else have anything else they want to say? Okay. We have a motion on the floor. Sorry, just to clarify for process. You, you're really, we were just looking for a chair, so you were nominating Karen, correct? Correct. Okay. So I would just go around the table and see. Okay, that's, that's the fine. best way to do it. Bill. This is a lot of I'm going to abstain. I think we should give Alana a chance. Okay. Karen. 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 Alana. Alana. Alana's going to vote. Alana, you go ahead. M my, myself. All right. Great. That's a tie. Four, four. Normally in process, if a tie goes what, Steve? I would go to the second round of voting. Oh, okay, great. I, mean, I just think we have to solve this and what's well, Doug doing right now? Right, uh, right. It's not, it's not, it's <laughs> right. not to get that far. Oh my god. Right. It doesn't exist. That's for elections. Without a lawyer here, I assume it's the same way. Oh my god, I but, don't know. Go ahead, <laughs> Bill. I think she I I I have of I what we've already discussed. Yeah. Alana. Tom. I'm going to say it again. Alana. Karen. 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 Alana. Tom, I'm telling you right now, 
This is not an abstention issue. You need to make a decision. Well, it's a hard decision. I, I, I absolutely so, so let, understand. Let me just say this. He's not going to change his mind, which he doesn't have to. Then I think we move on with you as chair in this West Dockard vote to the next meeting and do this all over again next meeting, knowing full well as a board, we can't discuss this outside of a, a meeting because of the open meeting law. So someone needs to have an epiphany one side or the other by next meeting, or we'll continue to do this for 12 meetings. Or someone misses a meeting, like if you come down with COVID, you're gonna have to drag yourself to the Zoom until we, you know, if we only have eight people here or seven. So. That's the question. Historically, how long has the chair been chair, like each chair? They can it depends on well, the Mr. committee. Gibbons, it depends on the committee, but he yeah. was chair for I don't know 15 or 20 years. Yeah. Okay. He's been chair of the school committee. Too, too I, long I'm here now. How long have the chairs been chair uh, 10 to 15 years? Yeah. It's not unusual for it to be a long time. The, there's no policy in town of rotating chairs. I'm not saying we shouldn't do it. I'm just stating back. Um the select board for two years had their own policy that every two years chairs have to change. And when it got to be the third year of a chair, we took the policy away so they could be in the chair for the third year. I would say personally, and if Karen would let me say this, we have had consultants come to the school who said, if it's not broken, why are you trying to fix it? We've had other people who said, yeah, it's not bad to rotate. I mean, you know, it's, it's your personal preference. I, you know how I feel, but maybe I'm prejudiced. I would really like to, I mean, I would love to have her as part of the game. I just, we, we got to get her in the game and then I'll, I'll be glad to train her on the job training, but not to just say, Oh, here, take it. I'm not going to, that doesn't feel comfortable to me at all. So I, I have a feeling nobody's changing. Who, who votes, who, who appoints the vice chair? Want the chair the, the, the committee the committee the committee, the committee elects the vice chair well yes yes the only difference here that we're doing is that committees that don't have either the town manager and this is tradition or manager town manager or assistant town manager or superintendent for schools usually they start the meeting off and there's no chair in minor committees or committees without that staff representation dpw had wouldn't be that representation karen would start the meeting off and like she did and, and doable. That's the only difference. And then all that would happen, Tom, is whoever's chair would then take the gavel, so to speak, and ask for nomination for vice chair. So I'll vote for Karen for chair. So let's go through another round then. All right, let's vote again. Bill. Karen. 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 Wow. Okay, it's 5-4. All right, we settled that for now. Alana, I invite you to come on in. Let's, 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 let's get some training started. I'd be happy, happy to have that. Okay, I don't feel like I'm looking at her. It's very strange. Yeah. Did I'm I make right. a, She's music. a nomination to nominate Alana for vice chair? You may. Is there a second? Second. I don't know. Alana, did you hear what was just said? I said I heard that there was a nomination for uh, me as vice chair. And there Correct. was a second. Correct. The question was, do you accept it? Uh, for the moment, sure. Can I ask a clarifying question? I what the heck does for the moment mean? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm 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 I guess I'm confused. So yes, I accept the, the nomination for vice chair, but I feel a little uh trepidatious about um Karen and my how we work together to make this transition to my being vice chair happen. So I yeah. think that that's something that you and I can figure out. We've had dinner once, we can do it again. Yes, we have. And we do very well together when we are out there in the world. Okay. So may I, may I comment? 
Oh, oh, please can, do. Can I make a motion, please? Because yeah, I think go ahead. Out of respect for Mr. Gibbons, and I think it should not be left on the table. I would nominate uh, Mr. Gibbons as vice chair. I'll second that just because. Go ahead, Tom. And you should ask him if he accepts it. Tom, uh, Paul, do you accept that? Hmm? Do you accept that? Yes, for the moment. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Again, for the moment. Oh, my God, we've got for the moments everywhere. <laughs> no, I accept the nomination. All right, fine. Tom. So my thoughts are that you have advice. Um, electing Alana as vice chair, it would be an opportunity for her to have more hands-on with the committee, which is some of the, which was some of the doubt or some of the question marks that were being raised of, with her being appointed the chairman of the committee. And, you know, it would be a good, good place to, because I, I definitely um, am in favor of bringing, encouraging new blood and new, new membership into the workings of this committee. And so I just see that as being a compromise of some sort that would that would accomplish that. That's why I okay. would nominate her to be. And there's no respect to Paul, because Paul, you've been here for, you know, well, longer than me, but <laughs> um, I'm just trying to. I've been here longer than anybody. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Anybody else? That's why I, yeah, that was. You have somebody with a hand up if you want to take public comment. Who? Louise Goldsmith. No, because this is not right. She can, I would be glad to entertain citizen speak, but this is committee work. Anybody else have anything to say about vice chair? Okay. Then I'll call the vote. Bill. Alana. Julie. Alana. Tom. Alana. Paul. I abstain. Paul. <laughs> Mr. Gibbons abstain. But this is going to be a motion for adjourn. <laughs> I know. Um, Alana. Mr. Gibbons. Okay. Ms. Siegel, welcome to the club. We'll see you next month. You and I should get together between now and then, okay? Or then awesome. and now. Okay. okay. Great. Um, meetings called order. Isn't that special? <laughs> <laughs> approval of the order. Order. I know we've been out of order for um June 20th minutes any comments deletions additions corrections approve is written second uh we need to roll call because we are hybrid all those in favor Mr. Meyer right yes 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 there we go. Hey. It's anonymous. Okay, park and rec request. Who's eat pickle dome? Uh, who's he for pickleball lessons on Thursday? There is a. Um, there is a. Perhaps. Parks and usage request. Susan, would you like to explain what you're asking for, please? Sure. First of all, thank you very much for approving use of the Fruzy Dome for pickleball. We have about 50 people on the roster. And right now, you've allowed us to use Fruzy Dome on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Sunday mornings. We are very appreciative. It's a beautiful facility. Um, um, Kyle Germerhorn is a coach out of um, Chatham, New York, and he uh, gives lessons at the Chatham Memorial Community Center, and he also gives lessons in Ghent and Valencia for the town there, and he has been giving some lessons at the Hoosie Dome on Tuesdays, and we are asking to use the Hoosie Dome on Thursdays for him to coach some of us, whoever wants to. We would be paying Kyle directly for the lessons and Kyle would make a donation to Parks and Recreation or the town, however, the whatever Park and Rec Revolving Fund. Park and Rec Revolving Fund, um, based on the number of hours that he teaches. Can you hear Alana? I can. Okay, go ahead. 
Um, and so we do all the scheduling, as you know, we take care of that. We are just asking for your permission to use Hoosie Dome on Thursday mornings between 9 a.m. and 12 p.m. for that purpose. There would be two sessions, probably three students each session. There could be more, there could be fewer, but that's what we are requesting. May I ask a question? Okay. I, I, I'm going to watch hands go up here like like a bad vote. Go ahead. So I, I just have a couple of questions. Um, how much is being charged per person and how much is being donated to the, the volunteer? Well, I don't think there's anything definitively set, but we've talked about $6 per hour as a donation. The cost of the lesson, because he's traveling and losing an hour's time, half hour to get to us and half hour back, is $75 an hour. Divided by however many people are in the class. And you're, the maximum number you're going to have in the class was six? Uh, no, it would be fewer than that. Probably, probably four, four, three to four per class. Yes, three or four. And the money would be, the, the total so, fee would be split between all those. So people. that works out to about, if my math is still correct, $18. Something like that. Something like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, who else had a question? Terry. Okay, you stated nine to 12, your form says nine to one. I made a mistake because it would be nine to ten thirty, and then ten thirty till twelve. To twelve. It's yeah. It's okay. it's twelve, not one sessions. Yeah. We yeah. Two yeah. sessions, Paul. So the seventy five dollars an hour is that per person? No. No, it's for, for the hour he gets that for the. So yeah. whether there's one person there or three people, right. it's the same thing. So for the maximum of an hour and a half a day or is it three hours a day it would be three hours per day would be the maximum so it's 200 so for the day it's, whether it's one person or whatever it's 225 dollars. no it's 75 dollars for a class it's an hour and a half there are two classes so, is it per hour or per class it's no it's 75 dollars per hour is what he gets but how many he's running group lessons right Yes. Yeah. This is extremely confusing. Yeah, this you're is you're running not for an hour and a half, and you're running group, but you're quoting oh, an a hour price for seventy five dollars. So I have to do the math. An hour and a half. But I don't know how you're going to charge people. Seventy five and whatever the other half hour is. But he's thirty seven fifty. Thank you so much. And you have to add that to the seventy five. So that's way. One hundred twelve fifty. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. So, so the, but he would be contributing per hour to the town's fund. So the cost for this gentleman for the hour and a half is one hundred and twelve dollars fifty cents. Among the the number of students in the class, yes. Okay, so yeah. whether it's one or three or whatever, it's still one hundred and twelve fifty. If one person were taking an hour and a half lesson, which oh, I don't know that would happen, but right. that's what he. Okay, so should have, I'm sorry. The difference between that sum of money and this nebulous donation goes where? To the gentleman as his stipend or pay or whatever? Yes, it's his pay. So in other words, he's going to make money off of this. Yes, yeah. yes. But he's benefiting us, the Great Barrington residents who are still busy. I don't care who he's benefiting. He's benefiting himself. Am I right? Well, yeah. Am I right? He's getting paid. Whatever this one hundred twelve fifty is his money. Yes, less whatever he pays. Sir Devin and Bill. Um, how many mornings is pickleball happening? It happens Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday, Sunday, but not always are people signed up. It's usually from nine to eleven. That's as much as is happening. Okay, so it could potentially be happening Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Friday, Friday. Yeah, right, but nothing's happening in the mornings there anyway. Well, I, that was my question: is that is it not open for kids to shoot around? No, no. We don't. We don't hire anyone, so we don't. We don't have. We don't have a staff there to do that. Sure. We don't. Yeah. They now the program at Busatonic the park. The park program has access from one to six during rainy days. In that building for nothing. That's all. That's part of the deal. 
but just on rainy days. Well, that they choose. I mean, if they wanted it, they could go. Yeah. I mean, but they, they, they said they, they only wanted it when it rained. It's like, okay. And they, they have the schedule. So they know what to do. They can't take the gym if the gym is already being committed. So they'll use the front work. Right. If they want it for something else. Anybody else? Bill. Um, the, all the prices aside. So if, if we have somebody um, like going down to Lake Mansfield, you know, to use the lake to teach swim lessons, is that is that is it okay to use town property for basically like a private entity? That's, the problem. that's basically what this is. Well, that's you what know, happens now. People teaching swim lessons. No, there are people that use that use Lake Mansfield for yoga class. Well, we pay that. We pay them. No, we don't. Uh uh. No. Oh, okay. Oh right. no no no. The money they raise. Okay goes into her pocket, okay? Same thing with Ruby, who does yoga at the Hoosie Dome. Right. She gets tai chi. tai chi, yeah. So, and she pockets and we haven't charged her anything either. So this is not, it's so not- $75, if you guys are talking about $75 totally fits within the normal range of, of a racket, a racket yeah. lesson. And if there's already a precedent, then I would I would say let's go for it. I, I don't disagree. My concern is that this board has talked and we haven't figured out a way that we should okay. benefit. And I'm not sure six dollars an hour is what right. we were talking about, you know, for for profits to use this. And so all I'm saying is we're again allowing it to happen without coming to a decision on some sort of policy. Maybe our policy is we're going to continue to let it happen, but we, we haven't. My other concern is the pricing structure. You at Simon's Rock probably have never had a pricing structure like that. Say to someone, it's going to cost you $112 or maybe $37 or maybe $24. Who knows? Depends who signs up. It's, it's usually so much per person and you take a risk that if you don't get a full crowd, you're going to collect less money. Yeah, group lesson. Yeah. Right, private lesson. Right. Yeah, so it's, yeah, that, that works. Alana's going to hear me. Okay. Well, yes, Alana. Well, one of my questions is just what was just what Steve was just saying about um, whether or not there is a contingency if only one person signs up. Who's who is paying Kyle? It's is it the person who's taking the lesson? So it is going directly from the person go having a lesson directly to Kyle, not passing through anybody else who's organizing how many people are signing up and what happens if five people sign up? That's his problem. Well, it's his problem or it's his benefit because then he's taking 3750. I mean, I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a problem. I don't mean to, to make more of a big deal out of it than, than not, but it feels a little bit like we have our hand in parts of the equation that maybe we shouldn't have our hands in and that we don't have enough, like Steve was saying, of a structure in place for the, the parks to get their needs met. Um, I noticed that there's no timeline on this. This is just like an ongoing thing, nine to noon, like four seasons. Is there any conversation about what happens when usage picks up in the winter or Someone Normally, else. the usage issue with the gym is yeah. afternoons and weekends for the I kids. Hear, I hear that that is normally, but what is the plan in, in place for when someone else comes to us and says we would love a, a weekend, uh, we'd love a morning in the Hoosie Dome? Is, I think that's is a great the, idea. I would love to see somebody come and say that. And I do believe very strongly that this board needs to set a policy and procedure for the use of town facilities, as well as Lake Mansfield, the yoga, the Tai Chi. I mean, it's sort of been up and whatever, you know, there's been no money generated off the, the pickleball at all, except with this, this guy coming in. That's the first click on that. So, so is this the opportunity to do that? Oh, this is our fault for even getting to this point. 
because as Steve has brought up, we have not taken the bull by a horn, so to speak, and set a policy of what we're going to allow. Now, I just have one question before I continue. I thought that the swimming lessons were free to people who took them. Is that not correct? No, I'm just talking about people going in and just- using... If Bill wanted to go give a swimming lesson, he could charge somebody to do no, that. No, but right now- don't, don't There are no swimming lessons. Does the first yourself give swimming no, lessons? No, that's all done. That's stopped. Okay, they, okay. I mistaken that. I thought they did. Okay, getting back to the point though, what would happen if we had a, an individual or group of individuals that wanted to run a camp to teach basketball, baseball, or whatever, and they're going to charge their participants $150, and they want to use our facilities. Would we allow that to happen? Apparently, we don't have a policy which we don't. prohibits it. Go so ahead. a person could come in and run a camp for say 20 people or whatever, $150 a piece, walk out of here with $3,000 and just use our facilities. Now the money is a lot different here. And is again, it's our fault for not having set this policy, but I'm a little bit concerned with an individual who's going to be taking in $112.50 and with the nebulous, he'll make a donation to the park and rec. That doesn't sit too well with me and it shouldn't sit well with anybody. Well, they did say $6 per hour per person, if I heard it right, when I first asked the question. That would be the donation. Yes, that would be the donation. I know, but that's, even $6 isn't written down in any form that's, Joe, you know, set. Joe, go ahead. So if you remember a while back, we had a conversation with the insurance company about this kind of stuff. Yes. And the insurance company, recommended we stay away from people that are using our facilities for profit. Okay. Um, and when you turn around and you um, take a fee, if I recall correctly, when you when you take a fee in, it up our um, liability yeah. on the premises. Right. You know, if there's a slip fall, slip and fall, snow fall, a snowstorm comes in when something using some flip and slip and fall. We not might not be tied to our our uh, five thousand dollars. If the board is going to think about drafting the policy, maybe we're going to draft it with the insurance company do something. I, I know from the conversations they for profit organizations as an extension of their business that we're concerned about. Right, and because we're not collecting the money, it it it, it, it is a nightmare to set up, and I. I'll be honest with you, I was in the insurance business for 35 years. Between the conversations I've had with Joe and, and the, it's a mess. I mean, I don't know what to do. All, all this was trying to do, all Susan and her, the group was trying to do, is this guy will come and teach. We couldn't find anybody to teach. There are a lot of people who want to play. So this seemed like a, a great, instead of having an individual lesson for six, whatever, to have a group lesson. So it, it, it's not made up to do anything other than make a service available. I understand all of your concerns, but the whole thing with the insurance and if we if we charge a fee and we collect it and they pay, it just gets to be. So this seemed to be an easier way to do it. Let them pay him direct, and he'll do, do a donation of a park and rec revolving fund at the end of the season. And I'm sure when school starts, this or whatever. That's where that that was the whole thought, Steve. I see two problems here that we just have to solve. And not take on like one is the question what if a group comes and wants to use Thursday morning but maybe a not for profit and the other problem is the whole collecting of a fee here which is not their fault this is the fact that we haven't been able to agree yep. on a, a fee and no one's fault it's democracy and we all it's it's a slippery slope so to me the best thing we can do and kind of to put the pressure on us is to say yeah we'll approve this for four months no guarantee of a renewal. And we have four months to come up with a policy and figure it out. I like that. Like that. And if make we a can't do it by then, then we continue. Make a and motion. I'll make a motion to approve this for four months while we come up with a policy. Second. Second. All right. Any more discussion? So 
what is supposed to happen, Steve, during this four month trial? We need to get it together. The, well, I would say this. <laughs> Knowing what the open meeting law is, I would say two people from the board need to get together and come to us with a draft policy or the chair needs to do it, but it's easier if two people do it. But if they do it, they're gonna to have to do it as an open meeting because they're considered a subcommittee. Come back to us so we can then discuss what the policy is. Writing a, a policy with nine people won't happen in four years, let alone four months. So your suggestion is that during this interval, the chair appoint a subcommittee? Uh, I, I would like that very much. But it, which then puts it under the open, open meeting law. Yes, absolutely does. I can I make that. another suggestion? Uh, and can I just say this? No. I yes. <laughs> I think this would be a great opportunity for the chair and vice chair to work together. And oh, you know what? I was I just I was going to say that. I uh, I would like to have that with Alana, myself, and Joe because he's done a lot of work with well, the Joe doesn't count. Joe, yeah, he doesn't. Well, I would like him as part of it because he has information that would be good for all. these meetings do have to be posted, then it's have to be counted. So you're saying that care and the the chair and vice chair and do this, and then they're the not subject to the open meeting. It is subject to the open. They're meeting. still a subject. Yes, it is definitely word. And it's considered to subject. Yes. Alana, you understand what that means now? I I definitely do. Uh, okay. I made it pretty clear. <laughs> All right, so let's vote. Let's let's go with that. Let's approve this for four months, based on what we've said. And Alana and I will figure out. We'll get it together and figure out how we and get Joe in there and see if we can get some sort of policy on how this would work. Because the problem is, is that it's also very different if you have a camp that comes in with twenty oh, kids. Sure. You know? Yeah. So some members of the committee did already do some research for the committee regarding other what other towns have done in terms of collecting fees. If anybody remembers what the, what has been found, if you'll send it this way. We did that. We've done it, we've done it a couple of different times. There was times. no consensus among the towns. Yeah. Not even close. I think, think what Alana is saying is starting over doesn't seem to make sense when the work is has already been started. Alana, why don't I give you a call or send an email and see if you and I can get to Carolyn because she may have a bunch of it. Okay, great. Okay, let's vote on this. Karen, uh, what, Susan? Uh, I just want to clarify because Alana mentioned something about scheduling. There really will be no over scheduling because we use team reach and we just put in the number of slots for a lesson. So that won't be an issue. And I'm just wondering what the donation. Well, I think with all due respect and whatever, I think he needs to come. Is it $6 an hour per person? Is it $10 per person per lesson? I think he needs to get something a little more specific because if he's giving hour and a half lessons and he's doing per hour, it's not six, it's nine. So I can tell what you do tell me what you want from him, I'll present it to him. Well, if you said it was $6 an hour, it's six my math, then, then it's going to be, Karen's right, the math is it's $9 per person per session. When when he's teaching in Chatham and in uh, wherever, again, it's per hour, $6, no matter how many people are in the class. That's what. Well, he's not going to just give us $6. He's yeah, if he's teaching people. three people and he's collecting 100 bucks, he's not giving us six bucks. That ain't going to fly. I'm just sharing what he's told. I understand that. But our expectation, and Ford, please correct me if I'm wrong, is that you said six dollars an hour. We assumed it was per person, so it's six dollars an hour per person, which is nine dollars per person per session. At an hour and a half. Bill, if I'm wrong, correct. No, I, I got that too. But, I'm, but at this at this point, we're doing this for four months, and you know whatever the guy does in Chatham or whatever else. Let's let it be and thank you. And just until we get our Let's policy in place. That we don't, you know. I get it. Works for me. But okay. I also would like to thank you for stepping up and, and taking control of this and trying to make this work for the community. So that, that really wants to continue to really thanks. And so much blood with so many residents. Pickle body. Yeah. Um, okay. Kind of need to write a, a check for a donation. Maybe we should have options just like with a better job. No, it needs oh, to go twelve dollars. Oh, stop! Don't worry about it. We'll, 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 I know. I know what we have to connect. All right. Parks, care, and maintenance. We got a vote. Yeah, no, we didn't. Oh, I'm so. I'm Roll call vote, Bill. Yes. 
Yes. Yes. Yes. No. Yes. 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 Eight one. Great. Mr. Um, Mr. Aberdale. Parks care maintenance. Um, the grass is growing an inch a night. <laughs> That's all. Mine's growing faster. <laughs> it is. Um, just a little update on uh, Grove Street. Um, all the um, all the um, play equipment has been removed except the swings. Everything is in place. The most is the why was the thing, why was the equipment removed, Mr. Aberdeen? Well, because it, it was a safety issue. Oh, right. Right. Um, so, um, and then do we, uh, we put the bedding in uh, under the swing set, we fix two swings, one is a swing away from the park, uh, and uh, there are two or three batches that are going to get a little bit Good. Anything else? It's great. That's so great. Also, just to update, um, Lake Mansfield, um, Alliance purchased two more benches <clears throat> and they also um, put them together and we went up and they are going to sink eight by eights and have brackets which are easily moved when it's time to redo the beach so those will be in benches are done thank you Christine Ward and her crew um, also um, Chief Walsh got in touch with me and Joe and I went up with Steve on 4th of July, 3rd of July, I can't remember what day, 4th of July. <clears throat> the entrance to East Rock is a, was a mess. So what's gonna happen is they're gonna brush hog 30 feet on either side. They're gonna trim out some stuff and they'll be parking there. So people who wanna go hike will have a place to put their cars. I believe we're also gonna put a picnic table or a bench up there, something like that. If we can get it level, if we can get it level enough. Okay. Great. Okay. Super. Um, one other thing, um, I had a few calls from the office um, requesting kayak racks at Lake Manfield. If you want to consider it, I would recommend it that we do stuff with like soccer and dogs. Um, and soccer, I think on the beach side, they have racks there. That's the common range space. Yeah, that's a great idea. What Where kind of would you put it? Kayak racks. Oh. It's a little hard to hear when the air conditioning goes. I understand. It goes very so where would these, if I was standing at the beach and looking out, where would the kayak racks go? I didn't even look at that part. I didn't know if it was something we wanted to say. Do we know how much they cost? Figure that out. Can I just ask, because I'm naive to this, who, what's the liability on that if there's vandalism? Is it ours? Oh, or so you have to follow the stockers to see if there's a waiver release. Okay. Out. Okay, just curious. And what that's they the, charge for the, the year? Negative for the year, they get a spot, they get a little sticker, it goes on. They're responsible for locking it up. All of this is wrap. I'm not a lockable wrap. That the people put their own cables up. Some of them didn't even have cables up. All right. So we're getting so, details on the kayak wrap. I don't see anybody saying right. no. Okay. Yeah. I think that's a great idea. That's what we need. Milani, you have any problem with a kayak wrap? Uh, no, it sounds like a great plan. Okay, good. Um, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead, please. Um, you mentioned that you, at Dewey, you would bring some benches. We, um, we put two pairs of tables. The big ones. One up by the plate set, and I need one down. That they Dewey. grow for it? Dewey. So I think there might be one down, two more out of the day. It's going to be three. I don't think got the third one there yet, but right at the intersection of the Anderson and the Kind of where the kids make the ball. Take the wooden thing with the bench. Yeah, they, we, the DPW bought enough to build like 15 picnic tables. So as they that. build them, they distribute them. I thought you said the swings at Grove Street are staying. The swings at Grove Street are fine as long as the mulch is placed to stay demobile. And so you weren't talking about the table that so. Yes, they're there, right here. They're here. Okay. Here, you you stand at the Julie. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. Anything well, else? Question? Uh, this is yes, go ahead, Paul. Um, is it 
have you looked to see into replacement or addition of any more of those grills? I have it on my list because I've got one. Because I'm pretty sure there's only two out there. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to see them, if, if at all possible, if the board agrees right. to, re, you know, get a couple of more. Because I think at one time at when which, we added the report. At which location are we? Hmm? Where? where, Paul? Where are we talking? The, at Lake Mansfield. In the, in the all right, let, let's, let's stay where we at. Pursue that. I'll talk to Chris because obviously that's getting all renovated. Yeah, we don't want to. Yeah. Okay. We want to make sure that's in the renovation. Why don't we put that on the wish list for next spring that the the girls go in? There may be some in the renovation plan. I thought there were. All right. Well, let's. I have one more thing to ask about since we're talking about Lake Mansfield. I heard about some many people over the years that they're interested in having like one of those floating rafts out in the middle of the lake. Is that at all? Possibility and under our purview. There used to be one. I understand. There used to be. And, I remember. Uh, but, but you know, it's, it's shallow out <laughs> and the, 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 it probably could be done, you know, but it, it, would, it, would, it would take a little bit. And we have to talk to the swimmers to see if that would also be out there. No, it's, 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 it only takes up. You know, oh, square no. footage, they it's can just, avoid it's, it. It's the depth. Oh, right. I mean, and jumping I, off and I, stuff. I so many people that they're interested in something like that. <laughs> I think that that's something that I would like Mr. Meyer, since he's the swim guy, to figure out how deep do you have to have something before you have a raft? Because if it's at four feet, you can, we don't want to have people hurt. So I think that. No, I'll go and measure. That's great. You know, I'll go and make some measurements and see what, see what we got. Okay. That would be, that would be doing great. <laughs> Berkshire South, where are you? Mark the Signore, where are you, my friend? Now would be the time to measure, Bill, while the water's up. Yeah, while well, the water's hot. <laughs> Go ahead, Mark. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, so weather. I want to tell everyone how we're uh, navigating the weather with our, uh, with Mansfield. Oh, God. And we've been... Yeah, obviously we know we've been really hammered by the weather, but what we're doing is we're stationing our, even when it's, you know, every single day we're stationing one of our park, one of our um, uh, supervisors for the lifeguards down at the pool or down at the lake when it looks really questionable, doesn't matter. But what they're doing is they're staying there, they're watching the beach and they're calling in lifeguards if it isn't looking like a clearly stable day weather-wise. So we have presence down there um, throughout the period. We have occasionally just for absolute storming the whole time where we have pulled them, but coverage has been very steady. We've been very fortunate with our stable of lifeguards. They've been all stepping up and filling each other's holes. So it's, as far as I'm concerned, it's been really, we've been very fortunate this year in terms of that. Um, does anyone have any questions on uh, the lake service? No, I was, my curiosity was, what are we doing for rain days? And you answered that right off the bat. Right, so be, Good. Uh, that's every time there's a weather issue that they're going to shut down. Or there's a storm. So he updates you, that's great. So there's a record, good. We're okay. also doing weather records and whether or not we're able to keep the beach open or not. So we're, we're keeping track of that. That'll be in the final report. Great. How's Housatonic? Housatonic is, uh, it's been very, still very quiet. I think I sent on to you, Joe and Karen, both the, the new web page that we put up on our site. And we're also running um, some advertisement in the shopper's guide that will be starting, I believe, next week. Um, but it's been slow. I don't know, I, you know. Yeah, I mean, I see the, I, I saw the stuff on Facebook. I put it out on mine. The town's done it. You did the, you did the bit. I, I don't know what, I honestly don't know what else you could do. I'll be honest. With you. I, I, yeah. I think you have put a good effort in this year to let people in Housatonic know. And it was on the Facebook page. It's been on the website. I don't know what else. We'll, we'll get the numbers at the end of the year. We'll see what's going on. Yeah, we are. Uh, we're still going to be pushing that stuff, of course. Good. And hopefully building some momentum 
Okay. But the, to the point of being able to need the Husey Dome during that really bad weather, um, I think what we're finding is even though we will set up in there, it's just no one shows up. Okay. It's raining. Okay. Thank you, Mark. Thank You're you for welcome. your updates. Rail, um, Railroad Street Youth Project, what you got? Hi, yes. Uh, I'm a sensory coordinator at Railroad Street. Karen has us last month to show our digital faces in person. So here we are. Um, updates. We have all the staff trained for first aid and bystander intervention training. Um, we also, speaking of the weather, our, our weather policy is we don't have the skate park attendants there if it's raining and storming. We just have our indoor drop in staff to look over the space and sign people board if we need to. But again, if it's raining, no one's really dating. Um, we haven't had any big incidents this year. Good. Um, yes. <laughs> I don't want to jinx it. Um, and Oh yeah, I want to talk about the graffiti. A few weeks ago, there was a problem with graffiti. We put signs up saying, if you continue graffiti, we're going to get surveillance potentially, and that stopped the graffiti. So Whatever works. Um, and yeah, this is Devin. He's our uh, official skate park manager, so we do the same as well. Hi, uh, it's so nice to meet you guys, and I'm actually really glad that you invited me to come here to talk to you guys, because I personally I prefer in person rather than um, over online. Um, I am looking forward to working with guys going for here. And uh, yeah, like Molly said, I am the skate park and group mentoring coordinator at RSID. Um, I did have a few questions, and if you guys have any questions for me as well, uh, about my person, about my like anything, um, feel free to ask. Um, I am a very open and transparent person. I had a few questions about the skate park, if uh, that's okay. Um, Come. Okay. Speak, awesome. my friend. Appreciate it. Um, so I'm I'm just trying to figure out how you guys operate uh, maintenance within the skate park. I've had a few youths come up to me and talk uh, about uh, the floor or the grounding and also uh, the bowl. Uh, I'm sure everyone knows the bowl. Um, and I've had a few of them come up with that to me and ask uh, about fixing it themselves. And I'm wondering where you guys get on it. No. Like, no. Okay. If there is a problem, the person that you have to talk to is right there. Okay. He, that's Joe Aberdale, the head of DPW. The reason I don't want anybody fixing it is if you put the wrong material down and some. Uh, yeah. Also, understood when that was put in, and whoever the DPW guy was, I can't. Was it Don Chesson? I can't remember. No, sure. Thank you. I'm so cool. The problem is, is it wasn't installed correct and it doesn't drain and there's chips and flips and whatever. And I would suggest, Devin, that you may want to get, if some of your guys have some ideas about how to fix it, is get them all in a room, write it all down, and then you get in touch with Joe and then we'll all sit down and go over that. But I don't want anybody going freelance and starting to fix stuff. I don't think that would be, okay. So Steve, can you help us back there? Yes, we have. Oh, yeah, yeah. So these, I share the, the list that we have from um, Barrow Street of the group that they want to see in their time. But I think he was going to work with the staff down there, come up with kind of a team list. And then we'll look at it. Yeah, a punch list. Absolutely. So can I just ask a question because my memory is failing me? Have we ever priced out fixing that bowl? Oh, God. I don't know. I don't know. Here's my question. We're, we're adding to other parks, and I think we should, but you have to maintain your infrastructure. And we do have the money right now, depending on how much it is. But if we don't know how much it is, how are we going to say no? So maybe it's something that at least we have Joe price out when he tells us it's a quarter of a million dollars. Joe, so what I want you to do is go on Google and check out skate bowl fixer companies. <laughs> 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 yeah, probably next to fishbowl. Bill? I love fishbowl. Bill, were you waving or did like you? Waving. So could it, maybe you got maybe you could get everybody together and think about like what would what would make that skate park just a little bit better for you. Yeah. You, you know, it's like you got you got the wave, you got the snake around, you know, there's all kinds of things. Like, aren't 
why don't you come to us and if, if, if everybody has an idea you know about what would what would improve that besides just fixing what we already got you know get it down so let's, let's think about it i would love to do that um i have uh I've had a lot of talk talk with uh, people that have gotten into this job and they seem to be on the same page as that. I'm more of a communicator to see like what, what can be done and then but that's something that I just work for. I love that. But sure. uh, thank you. Devin, I, I think that Bill's point is absolutely down. <clears throat> find out what they want, find out what we need, let's see what it costs. To get Joe may, you know, I think the whole thing is we've never been able to fix that bowl because here's the great and here's the low point. So what it looks like to me is we'd actually have to trowel in cement. So the bowl, <clears throat> you'd have to redo the radius is what has to happen, I think. So I think that would be an interesting thing to have. There, there are companies other than that that build these things. I mean, certainly. We, 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 we had got, one. We got one in yeah, stock. we had one. Yeah, we had one. That wasn't a success. I know, yes. but still, we got one in stock. We got one up at Pittsfield. Yeah. We got one up at where I mean, certainly, there there are companies that seem to build these, and I don't know why they wouldn't be in the business okay. of also repairing them. Great. Right. Yeah. I have just a couple more things. If that's okay. You got five uh, minutes. Go. Um, I. It's been very hot out, and my staff is wondering about maybe having a portable AC unit. Um in the shed that's where we can ask them to stay out when they're when they're on duty um i'm wondering if that's doable if, that's, like, if there's any thoughts around that um the ones that my staff and i looked into weren't like the ones that you would put in a window but rather ones that you would fill up with water um i think it it doesn't have the entire cooling system that a normal ac does so it, there's a uh, less danger with that um I'm but it's more like a, a mister a fan sitting on top of a road container water yeah yeah um and it just has very powerful fans sir debbie to to be in the shed yeah but isn't the purpose of the, the monitor to be out in the open so that when people come that they're there like i don't so um what we've had what we've done uh in, with my time here, um, they do a round of going out, and then we keep the skate park, or sorry, the shed doors open, the side ones open to the public. Um, uh, well, couldn't they just sit inside the building then? So, so we have been doing this thing called, uh, or I, I think it's called Camino Time, where we give them like 10 minutes inside, 20 minutes outside. Um, I, I, I would love to keep them outside just to keep an eye on things, make sure that nothing is happening behind the scenes. Um, yeah. But, and that was just the way that we could keep them out there in this heat. Uh, the shed does is indirect sunlight, so it does, you know. Well, why don't you have a shade? Why don't you have a triangular shade attached between the shed and the fence? Can we do that? Yeah, why not? Yeah, yeah. Because our, our lifeguards don't have air conditioning either. Yeah. No, there is no air conditioning at Lake Mansfield. You're right. Even they got a lake, a warm one. <clears throat> Joe, can we procure a 10 foot triangle shade sail and put it between the shed and the outfield fence? And then they're in the, sh you know, is that workable? Okay. And with all these, I would love to, uh, Joe, if you, if you want to. Email with me or talk to me about any of that. I would love to see that conversation. And then just the last thing, uh, RFIP is holding a permanent event for the skate park. Um, my staff and I, we were thinking about having a skate competition in August 18th. I am, we were hoping to do it between the hours of seven and 10 when it, uh, and that brought in question and our noise permit. I'm not sure what your guys' uh, system is for going about getting those no noise permits. Um, it, Do you mean uh, to tell me you think it's going to be noisy? We were hoping to have music. And, uh, and any any late night. That, I just want to make sure that. Go, go see the select board. You better write out what you want, what you're thinking of doing, okay. and stuff like that, because that would not be something. Well, it, they do have to get permission from this board. For this. We do? Yeah. Is it a permanent And then it's a select board for use of the park. And we don't meet again until the 14th. You got a problem because they don't meet till the 14th of August. Okay. So and this is this board doesn't. It's like board meets in the future. Right. I mean, okay. you're a little late. 
And was, you I, should have a two month lead time on stuff like this. Yeah, I, I only started in uh, May, so. I, I get time. it, but I'm just, but, yeah. I'm, I'm letting you know that we don't meet to the 14th and they the select board. Yeah. yeah. Which is not a problem because we meet more often. Uh, sorry, uh, 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Uh, we it closed at 7 p.m. Why don't we just make a motion? Why don't we, we just approve it? it? Let's approve it. Yeah. Make a motion. I make a motion that we approve it um, so that they can go forward to the selectmen. Second. Good. Any other discussion? Yeah, I, I'm voting on it because I'm against it. It's not on the agenda. And it's a violation. It could be a violation of the open meeting law. I don't need to well, I'm, I'm I'm willing. Yeah. Alana, are you willing to take that chance that we're in violation of the open meeting law? Yes, I'm willing. A chance under your yeah, under my leadership. <laughs> <laughs> She'll drive you right down. Drive the limo, baby. <laughs> no, I would I would do that because it is also up to the chair. It is also to be unanticipated. It's an un unanticipated request. It's also under the Railroad Street Youth Project. Yeah, a, a review. Yeah, we're going to try that. So we've got a motion and we've got a second. We're going to do a vote on this. Alana, you're first. Yes. Bill. Yes. 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 No. It's unanimous. No, I said no. Oh, he said no. I, my mistake. Eight one. So, Devin, now you go to the select board. Oh, thank you guys so much. Okay, are you and done? Get your notice to the selectman secretary as soon as possible. Yes, sir. Can I ask just a general question? It doesn't always happen. <laughs> okay. Yes, Paul. So, can you tell me where everybody is like parking when they come to the skate park? Just a, curious. So, typically, what we'll have is. Uh, the parking lot right out front of our SIP. A lot of skaters will park there. Beyond that, I'm not too sure where they park. A lot of the uh, youths just kind of skate in uh, from various points in town. They're probably parking around town. But other than that, uh, that's, that's all I know for parking. Yeah, and I'm going to say every time I go by, there's at least two or three cars illegally parked. And I would wish that you guys would tell them they can park this way. Don't park on the dirt. Don't park in front of the thing. Tell them if they are young and, 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 and absolutely healthy enough to skate, they can park in Housatonic for all I care. You understand what I'm saying? So I, I we got to, you know, there. and the other place you can park is on the other side of that building. Well, the, the thing that I, I'm just, I, mean, I went by there the other day and the world, the lot there was filled, and you're right, there was cars parked everywhere. But, but there were also seemed to be an extraordinarily large number of cars parked across the street, which is not our property. No. Oh. So I guess I don't know if it's our responsibility or if we just ignore it that people who are coming to the park and they park over there, they should understand. That they're technically trespassing. So as far as uh, RSIP goes, we have a we have a connection with that uh, yes. person who owns that, and they said that staff members can park there. Oh, right, okay. Parking there, yeah. we have a great amount of staff members. Okay, it just staff. seemed that there were more than more. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Aaron, do you see like hold on time cars? That would be Alana. Just to rewind one second back to the shade issue, I thought that there was a conversation a while ago about getting some more shade there by the skate park, not just for staff, but by the under uh, over one of the benches, if possible. Was that mm -hmm. we had about getting a triangle of fabric that could be somehow put up somewhere? Yeah, I thought that well, that's that was a I thought we were talking about who's the tonic, but that's right. Joe, can we just figure out what it costs to price out two or three of those shades, the triangle shades? What about those four post commerce? Go ahead. So we tried that in summer 2021, and it was, yeah, and it just did not work at all. Why? 
um, they would be the weather looks like it would be blown down even like in the middle of ships there. Okay, so we let's. Broke, I think we broke two. Oh, um, all right. So let's let's see if we can go with shade. Say I call them shade sails. Oh. One last thing. Uh, just a no, uh, noting that the trash bin behind the shed has not been uh, being taken away. It's been pulled for the past two weeks. Um, actually, probably longer. You're talking to the right person. Thank you. See him writing. <laughs> that's what Appreciate you, it. That's what you want to know. Okay, great. Now, thank you. Thank, thank you. you very much. We have a drawing. We have a map in front of us of Grove Street. And the, the, map, the picture is what happened today. The unsafe stuff was taken out. They put some picnic tables in there. There's swings in there. What I'd like this group to do is come up with at least two pieces of equipment that we can put in Grove Street. And I'd like... Um, I'm not going to say your name right. The the lady with the baby. Okay. Why don't you come up? Can you come up front? She and her husband did the Jerry Day, and they also gave us fourteen hundred and eighty-five dollars, I think, which is also on top of whatever we're going to do. So I'd like to know, based on the um, surveys that we've got, what are the two or three pieces of equipment? you guys have come up with, and then I'd like to hear from her about what her thoughts are. Um, first of all, I like the placement uh, done by Tegan Bond. Um, I'm glad the swings are staying. I would only, with the swings, I would only um, change the seat part of the, the, the more flexible thing to get the part flat. So that I don't really think about you want you don't like the straps or you want more no they're 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 not very comfortable. What do you be specific? You want flat flat part the flat like plastic the traditional, the traditional okay so you've got two what I call toddler butt holders yeah. and then two strap swings. So what you're looking for instead of strap swings is the flat flat. So flat. what people flat. Is that something you agree with? I never thought of that, so I don't know if that's more comfortable. I've never had a problem with the strap swing, so I don't. I don't See, really know. okay, that's all right. Go ahead. <laughs> well, how about this? Why don't we get one? One and one. I thought get, in every park we were also putting one for disabled. The problem is we're going to have to put up another structure to do that. Right. We could take one of the toddlers out and put a handicap kid one in, and you could take one of the strap swings out and put in a flat plastic one. So um, we were thinking about uh, a climbing pyramid rope pyramid. That seems to be um, a great piece of um, uh, equipment that we were finding in, a, in a many of the parks and it's a big um, I thought the swings were coming out. So I was going to suggest that we have a, a few different types of swinging structure, but I guess not. Um, also, we were thinking about slide, metal, and probably find some kind of other platform structure, but not like the plastic, plastic stuff. Um, Do you actually have items and costs on these? We have an estimate of that. They're going to cost about ten thousand dollars, right? Something like that. Ten to fifteen. Which is less 10, than 15, yeah. ten to fifteen thousand. Okay. Um, and since it's such a small, I mean, from these plans, so that would be a slide. Yeah. Okay. A climbing tower. Yes. And what's the third thing? Um, a oh, right. some kind of a platform structure for like kids to just climb on, uh, like there and be flat and have a bunch of different like kind of like what we a larger version of what we took out from here, so that smaller. Right. Let me let me out. let me talk to mom here. <laughs> All right. So. I agree. I think a larger version of what was taken out would be great. But the three things I'd like to see either incorporated into one thing, or I'm not sure how I feel about separate thing like the slide at Giggle Park. Kids don't play with it as much because it's just like a standalone slide. Kids want to like climb up, play on something, and then go down a slide. 
like they have it uh, it's on it um, it's interconnected yeah so then it's interconnected so again like a bigger version of what was there so the three things i like to see are a slide climbing ropes of some sort like you're talking about and um like the shade house that was there like the kids kids are imagining it and creative they like to play house my kid pretends that's a rocket ship and mm -hmm. a story goes underneath and sells you wood chips and you know kids love to in every playground i've ever been to kids are always like pretending that they're serving you food at a restaurant right uh, so something that's like a you know some, some kind of shade thing that's like a playhouse or just again i love the structure that's in the tonic that big interconnected thing that has all those elements climbing slide and like things they can play underneath that's what um, we need about the platform structure yeah so yeah i just i don't personally the Giggle Park standalone slide like doesn't seem to get a lot of love. Um, and they have that new triangle climbing rope at um, Lake, Mansfield. Lake Mansfield now. And again, it is cool for sure. And I, you know, I like the idea of something like that. But I think if there were a possibility of connecting all those three things, you can climb and then you're up somewhere, you know. The one problem with the connected, uh -huh. the cost of the, the engineering cost in those processes. You're talking those four standalones. Right. We're over fifty thousand. Yeah. So what I'm trying to do is hopefully get a budget somewhere between forty and sixty-five thousand to do the first in at Grove Street. The first in, meaning the first like a couple pieces. First phase. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's I have done some research myself before on structures, so that's like good to hear like an estimate budget. I could send along anything that I find to y'all that'd be great you should send it to um, sir debbie and to julie because they're they're going to be the ones to collate it and bring it back and say okay like i looked through the catalog of the company that they used to like mansell i don't know what i have saved right now but um but before you, you do all that work they already yeah. have some pieces picked out yeah. yeah. with her yeah and that way well, it's just what we have in mind we haven't picked out exactly the 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 one because there are several options that, many but this is kind of the well, yeah, we just got these um, you know, uh, yeah. plants. So we want, we need to know, are we first going to accept the size of the area that's going to be dedicated to the playground? Like, are these final or is there going to be public input to approve just the placement? Of no, you're going to have a playground area and then however things will fit in with tie and bond, they'll fit them in there. But, right, but we can't just make we can't make a decision today on something. I think we have to like have another meeting. Until I think you have to get an idea based on what she because yes. I know she's done a lot of research because I've seen it. Yes. But I think through your and, so we're, we're, yeah. and we're and I I don't know um what the final tally of all of the different uh, surveys was. Where is it? Where are they? We're still waiting for so, uh, yeah. the end of the month before we let them do a uh, session. I would, I would strongly suggest that you should get everything that's been turned in at this point and get that collated so we can move forward. What, what about the, uh, the structure that they have at the playground at Buddy Boy? Is it, have you looked at that? But because it seems to incorporate that, everything. That's that. one of those giant. Pieces that it was one hundred and fifty-five thousand dollars. Very well used. I mean, oh, awesome. absolutely! I know yeah. it. So that's why I brought yeah. it up. I want that, that spider. Be, Give me that spider. I think okay. over our budget. And not only that, but just the fact that Grove Street Park is just a different uh, setting than most of the parks around town. But we have to also respect the aesthetics, you know. So we, I can't just pick out one road structure. And just say, no, that it's going to be like totally, it's going to fit into the site. You know, it's just, you need to say, yeah, because a lot of people who came to the time with input, they said, we want to still keep it because the character of Grove Street intact. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So if you want anything like bright red, and right? Like, right. He's going to try natural neon colors. Yeah. That was yeah. one of the things that they had said at the public input that they yeah. wanted to see natural. Yeah. So wood it looks like, different. yeah, they have those options. I mean, what I imagine that's more expensive. Again, I don't know what is I, there? if there's a, just like a slightly bigger version of the thing that was removed today um yeah, i mean as a start you know we definitely um, during the public input meeting we had a whole slideshow of different inspirational images 
and many of them involve like these closed off little areas of houses with and you know climate structures mm -hmm. incorporated a lot of them would but we feel like Rope Street has it's a small footprint of the playground and we have to be very respectful and yeah I'm not sure what that means is that right this that you're talking about here new playground area. like but I don't know what that refers to like is it are these the swings that's in there Yes. So they want it towards the woods. For towards the woods. Yeah. Whereas before, okay. the playground was just in front of the swing. That could be yeah. I don't think this is accurate. I'll be honest with you. Okay. Um, because if you look at this picture, here are the swings. Yeah. And here's this. But if you look. Um, where the police had this shown how this drawing, I don't think you can really put it exactly they were shown because that right. was back. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, it goes kind of down after right. the swings. So it's planting where they, they and it's covered in like these ground ants. I don't know if you guys have been there, but like most of the summer, like there's all these little flying ants. Yep. Like totally forming up in the swings. And we like, can't do anything about it. Right. But I mean, that's maybe not where to put all the <coughs> right. new play equipment. <laughs> but no, but we are, we are. I think if you see where these are, these. Like the picnic tables are easily moved. So that's where they want to put them. Yeah. I think so. Um, some neighbors today mentioned, oh, the picnic tables are all in full sun all day. Um, yeah, but I also wanted to mention that old picnic table, like that has to go. That is right here, Joe. So this dangerous. thing with the bucket. Like, yeah, that should have gone. The plant equipment was not dangerous, but that table has like rusty nails sticking out of it. You bump against it and it almost falls over. It's really heavy. Um, but I didn't intend to, like, we did not intend to like, make a final decision today. Like, I'm not we, wanting you yeah, to make a final decision. We have in mind what, from just from like public input and from some of the surveys that we received via yeah, email. Great. Um, I think what I'm charging you is this next meeting, I want you to come with options. And I would have an option of two or three pieces, three or four pieces, okay. and a budget span <clears throat> forty to $70,000. So we have something to <clears throat> work with. Um, and I would take her input and whatever else you can do. Definitely. But it would be, you know, if well, we, we can come to a turn, we have the money. Yeah, but now that we found the outline of the area that right. is the plan, we have to go back out there and measure to make sure these things will actually fit. Perfect. You know, so I guess that's the next. Piece. Yeah, and then it's the budget also supposed to be doing all of this, I mean, like the you know, like the new gravel parking, like how is that? Yeah, the new gravel parking knocked that out. That that issue is not happening because <clears throat> this act, this egress right down here, is it's only a sewer line easement. There's no, there's nothing that's going to happen. The new gravel line parking has nothing to do with this. Nothing. So that's not happening. No. There's a way where the existing parking lot that you know that the guys made a couple of this last year. You can come off the end of there without taking any trees off, but the parking. Again. Yeah. So there's more parking available there for not a lot of money. This, this is a guy. You saw like the wood chips where the picking table, that is what the footprint is supposed to be? No, I'm just oh, saying okay. this is a general <laughs> area. And it's a general area. Once they good. get some measurements and we know where we are, because I think the great thing we have here as a point of reference is this tree. Yeah. I mean, that's not moving. So if you know that you're off 45 feet this way and 60 feet this way and then the part you know the area <clears throat> you know i think that will help yeah. but yeah, they I don't understand this map at all so well it's okay <laughs> you're, you're, you're not alone what david and i would also like to make recommendations for the type of benches that go in because we don't Feel that the benches that are in Eagle Park or around town are at all comfortable, oh. right? So the black metal things that are all over the place. Um, I'd like the, the wooden benches, like at like Lansfield, that we actually have a place, a flat place to sit and just relax, and it's like just. Feels better. Well, those are teak benches, and I, I don't believe we're going to be putting in teak, but I do know that we do have forms that have been ordered, concrete forms, that you will be able to put <clears throat> slats in and have wooden seating. Am I right, Joe? The old chest, you know. So we're going to be able to make our own benches. Probably. They're, they're I, I just want to go back here. 
the concrete side ends, yeah. and, then the and that's what they're going to do all winter is they're going to make the concrete yeah. forms and then we can put the benches up and they're wood they're not metal yeah the old school one yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. what yeah. 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 so that's what the, the, those four yeah. joe's already ordered Okay. The form. I just thought like we okay. as our committee should be part of that discussion because eventually makes such a huge difference for, for people who use a park. Nick. On that note, um, my neighbor just wanted to know like can citizens move the picnic tables? I mean, I assume so. They do it at our parks. Out of the sun. Have a blast. Roll, right? okay. Okay. Nick. Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. And who are you, sir? Uh, I am Nicholas Miller. I live uh, here in Great Barrington, uh, 36 okay. Everett. So. Okay. Um, so I, I, I like the recommendations uh, for the park. Hopefully we can get something, because uh, what was there at Grove Street was for smaller kids. Out at French Park, they have two different play areas for smaller and bigger kids versus uh, Giggle Park, it's not really adequate for most kids there. It's just kind of the equipment's not fun to play on. I see a lot of kids just kind of walking away from it, et cetera. So if we could get something that's more of a play area for littles that's and true. bigs, that would be great. Well, it's, you know, the whole thing at Giggle Park, people came to us and said, it needs a slide. You got to put a slide in. So we put a slide in, yeah. now nobody likes it. So it's really hard also opinions about play playground equipment are very varied and very whatever. I mean, the one thing we were able to do at Lake Mansfield was to talk the donors off of putting fluorescent neon plastic. <laughs> so we got them off that, which was marvelous. So yeah, that's, I think the that's natural, fair. thank you, Nick. Okay, anybody else on this <laughs> particular issue? I just wanna say, I think when you, Saying or like you know, we, people ask for a slide, you put in a slide. People ask for a swing, you put in a swing. I think it's because we're not looking at the the design in like a holistic way. Like if we come up with a scheme where it's more connected, it will get used better. I think like piecemealing it is what makes it not. Well, connected. the problem with Giggle Park is it went in that way, and then when it was time to do more we had a very restricted space where we could put things because yeah. we had to keep it open enough so things could happen with Biff and, and the Mahawi and all the other stuff. Right, so, so now we have this sort of open- Right, so now it's your turn. Go for it, girls. You got, an, you got an idea of numbers. You've got some community help. You've got catalogs. Now do your wish list. Well, I think, you know, Grove Street is fairly straightforward, I think, we think. Um, I think uh, the Huey Park requires a lot more. Uh, um, We're not even dealing with Dewey today. Oh, good. Okay. Oh, no, no, no. Good. We're good. Good idea. Get this finished, Grove Street. We'll let yes. you guys come back with yes. your recommendations and then Acre and surveys. Compile all your stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the thing about Dewey is because there is some open space. There's question about another basketball court. There's question about pickleball courts. There's question about a fitness fitness court that was just put in in Lee. I've actually been up. Um, it's 25 by 30. It's a little, I don't understand it, but that's all right. I'm not going to be using it. So there's all sorts of places and spaces. And as well, there are people like, don't do anything. Just leave it the way it is. Well, guess what? These are not neighborhood parks. These are town parks. So we have to take, you know, the whole idea of having benches that are comfortable for people to sit in. You know what I'm saying? Extending the, the parking lot that's there and not cutting in a new one. That's great. You know, so the stuff like that is, um, you know, we want to take that into to account. I know we don't have a lot of time left, but I wanted to propose that for Julie, that we'll hire somebody local as a landscape designer or architect to work with us. On to do what? Design the actual playground and the park. Wait a minute. Who said there's going to be a playground there? Do we? Who said you're going to have a playground at Dewey? I don't know that that's where we're going to put a playground. 
I'll be honest with you. And this is what we're going to be given. Um, and I, I think that was one of the things. Even just thoughts that ordered and burned yeah, this is not committed to whatever. Yeah, we still have to look at those surveys because Dewey is on the survey. Right. I mean, the so playground we know here has swings. That's all we know. Yeah. That's well, the only thing. I think their point is well taken. Dewey being it, it's length telling. There's right. nothing there. It's going to take three or four years to develop because it's probably Correctly. like right. 100,000 dollars a year. Yeah. And instead of us trying to figure out to put one piece here and then say two years later, I wish we hadn't put it there. Have someone who has some experience with doing this exactly. to phase it into something yeah, right really nice. i mean th their suggestion of community gardens yeah i'll be honest with you there are three or four places in town that you can have a community garden but senior center and other stuff and is 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 that what we want to do with that public space i i don't but there may be other people who do i think you guys should take this we, we might take this outline and draw, draw a few, you know. Draw what you're thinking. Of your own. Well, I think, I, I think a lot of us can do that together. Right, and I right. think that there's a lot of but local having, designers and local architects and local gardeners and yeah, people. Yeah. Right. No, they're architects. People have this to look at. But can we actually get three or four? You know, some, you don't like that, not like this. Yeah, yeah. yeah they're dead. There's four conversations. Go ahead, Joe. What were you in? in we have, we have yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes. 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 We yeah, it's an idea of what we want, but then there you go. Back with, our with some design concepts. Give them the items that you're thinking about and then give those to Gordon and let him then design it into your space. Yeah, but we need to figure out how to get in touch with Gordon and if that's appropriate. Well, we don't know. I think we have to be somewhat cautious because every time you call these people, yeah. Okay. So, you know, that's the, the thought process was he would come to this meeting, we would hear people say, you would put it on the conceptual plan for critique it, and that's where we're at now. So if you take this and you critique it, say, hey, go back to the court here because we have more writers who want to go straight. That's where he's looking for feedback. Okay. You know, go put on paper, you know, and lay it out and design it the way you want it. But I think that ask him to come up here and sit with us every time it's all right. Yeah. Well, we don't know that today, Lena. We're just under the assumption that there are like the engineers for the town and that their landscape designers and architects would be something outside of this. They, they do everything. They, they do parks, they do buildings, they do roads, they do everything. So but eventually, like, I think the responsible thing as a committee is to request down the road for schematics of like what the final design would yeah, look so, like. Oh, right? God, yeah, that's part of it. Yeah. generated images of like, this is actually what you want to walk into. Here are the plantings, these are the benches, this is what, you know, and then of the public right. input session to say, so we keep costs somewhat down and not yeah. involve all, you know, the computer aided design at this point. Right. You just hand the text and put your body for, for critique and feedback. Right. No, no, we, we understand that this is like, the very beginning. Well, what it looks like to me, you would then do is let's say there are four sections here the parking lot, basketball, the playground, the gardens, and pickleball. Then say, okay, let's concentrate on this section first. Yeah. Give them ideas of what we think. Like you play that schematic. First. And that schematic, you may say, oh, that's not what I meant. Or that's not going to work like I thought it was going to. And it goes back and forth with him. But you're not going to design the whole park at once. No. No. But. <laughs> So but, one thing on Dewey though is you gotta remember the town has a tenant in that building and that parking lot is part of their thing. So that part that basketball court can't go. It ain't happening. But we're gonna talk about that at the next meeting, right? Yeah. We are this stuff will be at the next meeting. Well, we're gonna try to get I want to get Grove Street moving. And that's the most important. And then the next priority will be do it. Okay. I don't want to talk any further on doing well, that. So Grove right. Street would the next step be that. The two of you kind of put the thoughts together, what you want, like yep. different things. Some of questions and what you want, and what you want, and you know, it's almost completely recreated. Even the 
Well, it is. It doesn't have to be appointed. So you really should now post your meetings. And you're going to meet. See that this is the other thing. It gets really unwieldy. So I think I can send you two things that we can't respond okay. together. Right. Okay. And respond together. What else is going to be talking about? I'll be moving on to the tonic, please, or not down. Nothing. No. Citizens speak. Yes, ma'am. You got to answer. What? Yes, ma'am. Hi. I'm Margaret Parrish. I'm a co resident. Okay. Can you hear me? I can. Yeah, this is my friend, Mary Stephen. I know her. We, we're to, uh, swimmers at Lake Man's Pools. Yeah. And we love the lake. It's a, it's a fantastic. I really appreciate uh, how much you've taken care of the lake. And I really like the plan. It's a lovely. Uh, swim there probably five, six year, months in a year. So it's... it's, it's You're like, a better woman than I. It's like a church. You know, yeah, okay. Like, Whatever works. Um, there's a lot of weeds. The weeds are getting more and more and more. So we were coming here to ask you if you might mow the weeds. Mm -hmm. Because I understand that that's an uh, ecologically friendly way of dealing with them. I'm really glad you don't poison the weeds like Prospect Lake. Does. You actually have the wrong committee. The parks doesn't handle the lake itself. I see. Um, I is that I conservation know. or is that Lake Manfield? We, well, Joe will get in touch with you okay. to find out who does it. But okay. it, the, we handle the beach. I see. You don't handle the lake. We don't do, we don't do weeds. Right. But do you do the platform in the middle of the lake? We're thinking about it. And yet not the lake? No, well, we, we would have to get permission to do that. We, anyway. We'd have to go to the whoever the Raining Cuba is about that, but we the, the weed issue you're talking about yeah. is been an ongoing Berkshire issue for decades, oh. not only here but in Stockbridge and everywhere else. Is it milfoil? Do you need a harvester? Yes, yeah, Stockbridge knows, right? Stockbridge, oh, yeah. thank you. Yeah. My pro prospect poisons, which we don't want to do. Yeah, I understand. Uh, yeah, until there's a small lake, you could grow it, you know, just. Yeah, well, the idea of you can mow it. I have a friend who has one of those, and it was thirty-eight thousand dollars for it. And the idea of we don't we don't own one. The town of Great Barrington does not have a lake mower. So my well, understanding well, is that there's been a lot of money that the town has made from weed. So, but before we go too much farther, from reading minutes of meetings, yeah. I have a feeling that mowing is not the answer because it spreads things, and that's why they've chosen not to mow. But I think it's a conservation commission, but I'm not yep. positive because we're not the experts. So we, you can I'm tell not us. An expert no, either. no, we, yeah. we you just don't want to swing in the weeds. Yeah. It would be great to have just some area of the lake that didn't have weeds. But that's 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 kind of balanced without the, 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 the spray. It's been what? In the, the mowing is bad or mowing is good? Uh, there's, there's been there's been long term uh, studies done that actually find oh, that no it, motor, it benefits right? the lake in the long run. Because you don't have the weeds sinking down and turning into compost and eutrophying the right. So it's so there there are some studies out now that it's actually not that it grows more weeds, but that it cleans the lake up. So it is something to consider. I'm on the lake mental task force, so I'll talk about I think that that's a good place to start is like Mansfield. Yes, Mary Stevens. Well, I, I just noticed. And every year, more and more people are doing like uh, paddle boarding and they're doing the swimming in the middle of the lake. And I think it's, it's so concerning that the weeds right near the boat launch are so huge and they really entangle you. And kids are going out on the paddle boards that fall off and get entangled in weeds. I, I think we. I mean, I know this is not the right place to go, but I think. Well, I think Bill is part of Lake Mansfield. I think the Conservation Commission, um, Carolyn, I would ask that as part of the minutes that you send this section to the Conservation Commission and say, we have got concerned citizens about the weeds um, and what are they doing about it or how do we direct you? Yeah, I'm not sure they're right, but maybe the task force. I don't, I don't know. know. You know, Chris, the one thing I don't know about Christian, but Christian Ball, he's not better. He's seen pretty well. Yes, and you know, the one thing I would say that we are somewhat responsible for it is, it, it, like, like Mary just said, it's kind of a safety issue. You know, I was swimming out there the other day, and there were two guys, and they got caught in weeds. And 
I, I almost went over and helped them out. I mean, it's like there are enough weeds that it's it's a safety issue. You know, and that that that's I think that's what Mary is is. No, I, I think they're right, but we don't have the jurisdiction over it. Somebody. It's else. a four prong approach. Yeah, yeah, sure. Well, you know, I'd say we open up we open up the conversation. I yeah. don't think it's a bad idea. I think that's, it's a good idea. Good. So the conservation is that. Part I'm not sure. Part well, of between of Bill and Joe, they will figure out who you should go. Here, sure. Can you please I'm give? Joe, your contact information. Okay. I want to point out that at one time, many, many years ago, there was a weed harvester on there when the fire district owned it. And they cut the weeds and they cut the weeds and we're where we are right now. You're never going to solve the problem. Although I think chemically we should take a look at that. They it can't be just cut once. It does have to be continually cut. Yeah. Stop in Southbridge and in uh, Lake Buell. It has to be kept up. They do it every year. Yeah. Well, I think well, Lake Buell has a full-time person. Well, they're mowing all all summer. But we would only think about mowing the center of the lake so that you know swimmer can swim. You know, open water swimmer can actually swim in open water, not at least. Okay. Well, yet again, it's been another fascinating park and rec commission meeting, and we've got all sorts of new stuff to deal with. It's five, ten years. You have to worry. Any, um, any other citizens need to speak? No. Committee. Who? What? Nobody has a hand up. Oh, I thought I thought it was something. I don't see anybody. Bill. Oh, I, I would just like to thank everybody. I mean, it's like I, I'm. I hope there's no hard feelings about today. It's like it, the, the issue that I brought up was, you know, I, I, I'm looking forward to another year of these kind of meetings. Julie, Tom? Yes, I do. Um, I want to follow up on what we were talking about a little bit last week or, or at the end of the meeting about care and maintenance of our uh, baseball fields. And I think that it's some. We, it, it's worth a discussion on a next agenda or another agenda. Um, the situation is we have four, five baseball fields that are the park, you know, our four Olympia Meadows and Memorial Field. And we're putting a significant investment into Memorial Field as we, as we go. And I don't think, I think that, you know, our policy has been that the maintenance of the, the baseball area itself has been basically left up to those who use it to get the work done. And I just see that as not being, I think that's being, we're asking an awful lot of the little league, the softball people, whoever uses these fields, the millers, to be proprietors of this. I mean, there are parks, it's our infrastructure, and I feel as though the town should be able to if, if maintain them. Which when we, I know we had the discussion, how do we do it at the monument? Well, they have professionals or they have roles as pillars or whatever. And Steve made the point like, well, the town crew is overtaxed. There's just too much to do. And I understand that. I don't think the town crew should have to do it. But I think it would be good to budget in to get landscapers or whoever would do it to put the fields to bed at the end of the season. So, you know, and open them up in the spring, you know, at least so then when those that come to use the field, Little League, Girls Softball, Millers, whatever, fine, they're responsible from, okay, we've handed it over to you now, you use it, you take care of it and give it back to us in the state you found it as a policy. And then after they're done with it, you know, I just think that, that it's, if we're gonna have these, this infrastructure that we we as a part as a town should main, uh, maintain it. If we can't afford to do it, then we shouldn't have it. That's that's what my feeling is, and I'd be glad to have this carried on to an, another discussion. Um, is you know so maybe we can budget and some of the uh, uh, infrastructural work for maintaining. The, the baseball field. We have a lot of infrastructure down at Olympia Meadows. I would also 
like us to look at, you know, that's a beautiful park. Besides the play areas, you have a lot of area going out the river, you know, and if you look at the whole circumference of the moat area, it's really, it's all grown in with invasives, the tangled mess. And I, I think that it would be also worth us to budget get in there and cleaning out some of that, brush hogging it, you know, making it a more natural, uh, get, getting rid of the, the stuff that's growing in the vine, very sweet, different invasives that are killing trees all around, around the perimeter, you know, just as a part of uh, maintaining that Olympia Meadows as, as a, uh, I don't know what the word is, but um, I'm looking for it, but um, a state of, you know, a state of, of beautiful park that we own and maintain. And it's worth the, worth the investment. You know, plus also what you did, you know, earlier, keeping the buildings up to date that we have down there. A whole bunch of it, different well, issues, but I think that there are, and I think Steve touched on earlier, we have our current infrastructure park off the park. Right. And so, so that's we're what I'm not very good at that right now. Well, that's what I'm trying to suggest. So I, well, I, Karen was in the office one day, and um, we have a piece of equipment that's up, up to be um, up, upgraded this year, and we may be able to purchase an attachment we have for, for that machine that we need. Um, much like they do at the high school. Um, we found out Frank does it up there. Like, um, mm -hmm. um, Harley, yeah. you know, a power rate behind the machine. They do it a couple times a month. <coughs> speed to keep it loose. So, again, we're exploring that. You know, because they kind of felt that's where we were going last time. So, we're, we're going to price that out with the machine talk. It's just not a good system. Well, then if it yeah, makes sense, but I, I also see don't overtax it. You know, you guys got so much work to do with it. Is I think that's what you know. Again, the guys, the buildings and grounds guys have done a tremendous job over the last year in my mind. You know, replanting Main Street, doing things in the cemetery, things. You know, they're all the little perfect all the time, but they work very hard. But I think at some point here, we're going to get to the point of saying. We're going to have to add bodies or subcontracted out well, or something like that. That's why I would suggest subcontracting it out. And it may be, you know, an economical, economically feasible way of getting it done, you know, without adding labor force, more labor force, and over action our existing forces. Okay. So Debbie? Um, I'm going to be really quick, but I just want to throw out the idea that I think we should think about putting like a water feature at Pusatonic and I have I mean I have all these catalogs that I've been looking for and there's a whole catalog on water features there's no prices on it so I thought maybe I could talk with Joe and we could find out how much something like that would cost and bring it to the committee because every time I go by Pusatonic it is blazing hot and there's not no one's out there when it's so hot that a splash park would be or just one water feature could really change the way that park is used in the summer by kids. We did look at that when we did, that was one of our, on our wish list when we did the last big upgrade. Oh, okay. You know, we were thinking in the corner between meadow and park, you know, along the fence and that, that corner would so, be a, a place to, that we could fit in a water feature because you also have the water fountain yeah, or the yeah. access on that side. So, I mean, it's just something that I agree that, that splash pads or whatever. Be, there's not one in our town. Yeah. Mr. Gibbons, I think um, we as a committee need to um, maybe in some cases pull back a little bit. I, I'd like to see us do a smaller number of things, but do them well. I'm just, you know, looking at at, at this and, and the concept of uh, a Dewey Park, and we're talking about getting Memorial Field done. And you just brought up a nice point about a water park. Todd brings in. We need to, I think, focus on a smaller number of things and do them well. We're trying to do, I think, too many things. And the only thing it reminds me of is the old Soviet Union five-year plans that never got finished. And I think we need to, you know, just kind of concentrate our efforts on a couple of 
really good projects and get them done well and then move on. Doing trying to do too much, I don't think is going to work. Terry, uh, I just have one thing that I want to ask a question about. It came up at the end of last meeting. Um, it was mentioned that the gazebo out back was being moved. And my question is, I guess, twofold. One is why, what is the reasoning for moving it? And secondly, the people that have decided to move it, have they ever come down in the evening when there's a concert there? As it, where it is now, you sit to watch a concert, the sun is to your back. You move it over in that corner where I'm understanding where it's going to go. Now the people sitting watching the concerts, the sun is going to be beating you right in the face. Final I was wondering plan. if that was taken into account. Final plans will come to the select board at some point, though. Yeah, probably in the next month or so. So that the select board is going to make that decision, and we it hasn't been. I mean, the the plans are going to come to us, and there will be chances for us to say we don't like it, but not a whole lot. Right, just as somebody that does go down to those. Yeah, concerts. I'll pass that on to the leader. Good. To make sure it can be addressed. Okay. Alana. Thank you. I look forward to this year with you. All right, baby. Uh, Mr. No, Bannon. Although I will tell him I do agree with you. Give it a lot of thought. We never had anyone work on the fields because the fields were always pristine and. We didn't really, we never spent $20,000 on each field or 500 on Memorial Field. Now that we're investing in it, it's our responsibility to keep it up in some way. So we, you, a little surprise. Not surprised. Makes yeah. sense. I'll tell you what, from my perspective, I would love that it's all taken care of. Then we don't have to give anybody a hard time. All I'm going to say to you, and I want you to be aware that in order to do what you want to do, we're looking at increasing our budget over $100,000. And we're going to have to make, I mean, if Abby Schroeder can stand up at town meeting and say, well, I think you want to have another fake 50,000 bucks and it didn't, nobody batted an eye. I think that's point one. Point two is the amount of, whether we have to sub it out, which would be smarter because if you start putting more employees on, the amount of cost gets crazy with pensions and medical insurance. Yeah. Yeah. You know, let, so, let the administration. Yeah, that that'll be that. your problem. So I I would love to see, I'd love to see this committee stand up and say, yeah, that's a good idea, as a group. I'll take a motion to close. Then it's uniform. Yeah. I'll make a motion to close the meeting. Second. All those in favor. Aye. Great. Two hours later.